We're live. Okay. This is coming. Okay. It, it is about to stream. In fact, it'll probably be, it's probably streaming right now. And Chris, can you make sure it's on speaker view for the stream? Yep. Thank you. And a little message on my screen that says it's streaming live. So, okay. I think we're good to go, folks. Um, Appreciate everybody's patience. I'm gonna call this uh, this meeting a virtual meeting of the Regent Candidate Advisory Council to order. This is Monday, December 14th, 2020. Uh, it is 10.08 a.m. I wanna thank everybody for being, um, being on and thank you very much to the LCC team for, I know this is a technological uh, effort for, uh, for everybody, so we appreciate everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, hard work on this. Um, this is the meeting where we uh, select who, uh, which candidates and applicants will be interviewed um, in early January. So uh, first uh, item on the agenda is approval of the uh, meeting minutes of October 7th, 2020. Are there any, uh, any uh, changes to those minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion and a second. So moved. Oh. Second. Looks like uh, we've got a lot of motions and seconds, Sal. <laughs> I saw Paul and Paul. Uh, Jerry a second, I believe. Um, if, if there is no objection, uh, we'll just we'll do a voice vote. All those in favor, say or indicate aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion passes, the minutes are adopted. All right, uh, next item, we're gonna move to some committee reports. Um, first is Tim Hipsch uh, to report out on the reference check and interview process committee. Council member Hipsch. Thank you, Chair Walter. Um, I'll direct everyone's attention to the two uh, attached documents uh, to our meeting information. First one, the RCAC reference checking questionnaire, 2020-21. Uh, um, this, the, the committee met and went through this. Only a few minor changes. Uh, dates were updated um, so that uh, the, the plan is, is we're asking for references to have written responses back to um, the LCC team by December 28th. Uh, and then it will be sent out to RCAC members by December 30th. The only other change that we made is um, uh, last year, or last in the cycle, we asked for uh, we, we sent the list of references out to the whole RCAC committee for review. Um, those came back really quick last year, so we, we changed that to be a one-day turnaround. Uh, our, um, our plan is to get that list of references for everyone to review out later today um, so that, that you have a chance to look at it. And that would give us a chance to send out the request to references tomorrow, uh, by end of day tomorrow. Um, the, the questions themselves um, did, not, uh, did not change at all. Um, so these are the same same questions that we had uh, two years ago. Uh, and we had good response from the uh, from the references then. Uh, the second document I'll call attention to is the interview process uh, and question uh, questions committee. These are suggested interview questions. These are not the, the only questions that can be uh, asked. These are just a, uh, a listing of some potential questions that um, that RCAC members could ask uh, during the interview process in January. Uh, and I know we have an item later on the uh, the agenda to talk through kind of what the process is going to be as we go through those interviews. Um, but um, there were just a, a couple slight uh, tweaks to some of the interview questions here uh, for review. So with that, um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'll take any questions. Are there any questions for Council Member Hipsch in that report? I am seeing none. All right, thank you. Um, I, I don't think that's, uh, we, we don't have to adopt that, correct? That's just a committee report. Okay, and then we're gonna move on to the recruitment committee. Uh, Council Member Taylor. Thank you, Chair Walter. You have before you a list of applicants for the 2021 Regent cycle from the 1st, 4th, 6th, and 7th congressional districts. We have six applicants in the 1st, quite diverse in terms of background. Ag, we have a former legislator, also represented medicine and teacher, and we have an incumbent regent 
Randy Simonson from Worthington, who's applied for a full six-year term. We have seven applications in the fourth. This is an open seat. Two-term regent Rick Beeson has chosen not to apply for a third term. So this is a truly open seat. Seven candidates, once again, quite diverse. Attorney, teacher, education, community volunteer. So I am quite pleased with that breadth of selection. In the sixth district, we have four applications. Um, attorney, uh, interestingly enough, in my recollection, this is my sixth and last cycle, the first time that we might have had a pharmacist. So I think that'll be kind of interesting. And then we have incumbent Michael Shu applying for a second full six-year term. In the seventh congressional district, we have three applicants. Um, each have a strong connection to the agriculture community, which is clearly a very important issue for the seventh congressional district. So Mr. Chair, that's kind of a, a brief overview of a very, that's not me, <laughs> diverse um, and, and strong pool of applicants for the 2021 Board of Regents cycle. Thank you, Paul. I, I uh, want to uh, extend my appreciation to Council Member Taylor once again for leading this recruitment process. I, I, I uh, agree that there's a, a good, strong slate of, of applicants there so that, that we have to choose from. I know uh, after what we went through last time with the number of applicants, we were concerned in the recruitment side of things. And once again, um, Paul, you and all the all the folks on your committee and others have, have helped significantly. I uh, appreciate that work. So. Um, with that, we will now uh, move on to the uh, to the uh, review the process for the selection of interviewees, and then um, I'm going to give a quick overview of how this process goes. And then I know Council Member Erickson uh, has uh, a, a, a potential motion that he would like to talk about. But let me tell let, let me explain this process. So uh, essentially, we will go through all four of the congressional districts, um, uh, and then you will all vote, and you can vote for up to six applicants in each each district, once, once an applicant were, would receive a majority vote, a simple majority vote of the RCAC, they would qualify for an interview. Um, again, as you may recall, our ultimate work product here is to recommend two to four people for each district to the legislature. Um, I wanna introduce, I wanna recognize council member Erickson uh, now for, I know he has got a, um, potential rules suspension he would like to discuss. So council member Erickson, are you, I, I see you smiling at me, but I don't think that's you live. Council member Erickson. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? We lost him. He's, he's muted. There he is. Oh. He's scheming behind the scenes. Is anybody, um, like Council Member Farrell or Council Member Madsen, do you, uh, I, I think you, you both know the, the background here. Do either of you want to speak to this? <laughs> I think Barb probably has a little bit more interaction with Jim, so maybe she should be the one that speaks to it. I've, I've only seen the quick email. Yeah, which is, so um, what we would normally do is go through each, you know, the um, applicant, the applications, the actual applications are posted privately for all of us to review. And um, so we would, on the strength of what they've written for their um, essay answers and their application information, as a team, we would go through each applicant and decide if we wanted to invite them for an in-person interview with the RCAC. Um, we typically, I remember the last rotation, we had 54 maybe applicants and we interviewed 22, something like that. Um, when you take the amount of time that we have to interview, 
Um, and again, that we recommend between two and four for each seat. Um, we took the number of applications um, on the strength of their paper application down to invite them a smaller number to come in and interview. In this rotation, we because we have 20 applicants and they're spread across all four of a, the congressional seats, what we were thinking um, is that we would suspend the rules and make a motion to suspend the rules that we don't review each applicant right now separately, um, but that we would go ahead and invite all 20 applicants to come and um, interview with us in that first week of January. Um, 20 is a reasonable number, it feels like, in terms of our schedule to be able to do that. Um, and again, you know, I, I don't personally know these applicants, but I, I took the time to read their applications and read their responses. And I think they are all, in my estimation, deserving of an in-person interview and would look forward to meeting them. So, um, so that's what we had talked about or thought about um, Jim had made the suggestion. Uh, and I see Council Member Erickson is back. Okay, so, so maybe he can take it from here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Council Member Erickson, I'm gonna turn it over to you. As I, Barb just kind of explained a little bit of the, yeah. the, the idea of suspending the rules to uh, interview all 20 applicants, um, essentially. So I just wanna turn it over. The, the, the motion to suspend the rules is non-debatable. So once it's made, we need to go to a vote. So before, before the motion, I just wanted to make sure that we were uh, giving um, apt uh, attention to it. So Council Member Erickson, do you have more, more thoughts you'd like to add? To no, I think, and I'm sorry that I rang off, I took a legislator call there, which is kind of high on my agenda these days. Um, but uh, no, you and I have talked about it, uh, Chair Walter, and uh, I, I think Barb said it exactly right. We've done more than 20 before. I would like not to cut somebody out, you know, one or two or three out. Uh, make them outliers. We can certainly sit here them all. And I think that's the case. And Mr. Chairman, you took that idea that we discussed and I think have kind of vetted it with a number of people. So um, I'm in support of it. Uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, Chair Bernardi is on. She was afraid she might not get on and she wanted to express that she supported it, but I'm assuming she is on because I see her name. So uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I, uh, I support the motion. I'm going to defer to Chair Taylor to make it because it's really an endorsement of the good work that he did that we have 20 great applicants. So if, if and I did talk to Paul about this, if Paul wants to be the mover of that motion, I would defer to him uh, as chair of the uh, recruiting committee and thank him for his good work. Thank you. Uh, Paul, before we move to a motion, I just wanna make sure that everyone understands what, um, what we're talking about. So, so essentially the motion would be made to suspend the rules and interview all 20 candidates. Uh, who have applied or all, all, all applicants. Um, basically what we would be doing is skipping this next process, which is going through all four congressional districts one by one and voting on vo voting on each of them. Um, as, as council members uh, Farrell and Erickson have expressed, the thought being that it, on, on initial review, all of these applicants are strong uh, contenders and there's not necessarily any here that we don't, um, that, that don't meet the first threshold to get an interview. So. Um, it, are there any comments or thoughts on that before we move to, again, once the motion is made, we have to move to a vote because it's a non-debatable motion under Robert's Rules of Order and we stick with Robert's Rules of Order. Um, <laughs> so are there any questions or comments prior to a motion being made? <clears throat> and it's a, it requires a two thirds vote, by the way. I'm seeing none. One more time, anybody wants to comment on this? If not, I'm gonna I'm gonna recognize council member Taylor. Thank you, Chair Walter. I wanna propose a motion that we suspend the rules and in order to provide us with an opportunity to interview each of the 20 applications that we have received as of the deadline last Wednesday, December 9th and to interview them virtually, individually, during the week that begins Monday, January 4th. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. It has been seconded by Council Member Madsen and 
as I said, non-debatable motion. So we will we will move to a vote on this. Again, it takes a two thirds vote. You are voting to suspend the rules and interview all 20 applicants. The clerk will take the roll. Chair Walter. Aye. Senator Anderson. Aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Senator Claussen. Aye. Representative Daniels. Aye. Didi. Anglin. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Farrell. Aye. Hipsch. Aye. Kraus. Aye. Madsen. Aye. Menon. Aye. Miltimore. Aye. Mohammed absent Moore. Aye. Ojala. Wendy. Did we lose her? All right. Aye. Uh, Peterson? Aye. Provan? Otto? Rogers? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Wakefield? Aye. There are being 20 votes in favor and no votes against, the motion carries. So we will uh, interview all 20 candidates. Um, thank you folks, that, that speeds up the, the, uh, the fifth item on our agenda uh, considerably. Um, so let me just quickly, um, so traditionally what we've done in the past is um, each interview would be a 45 minute interview. Obviously this is gonna be done by Zoom. So we're not all sequestered in, uh, in a state office building conference room for several days on end. Um, the question, I think, um, Sally, and feel free to pipe in here if there's any, I think the, the question, in the past we've done these all in sequential order just because we're bringing everybody into, um, in, into a meeting. Um, I, one of the questions that's been raised to me is there, is there a possibility to uh, extend and do some in the evening times? What is the sense of the of the group, um, do you want to proceed as um, we traditionally have done, or should we? You know, we could provide it. This would provide additional scheduling flexibility, I think, to candidates. But obviously, we've got 20, 20 some of us. Uh, Council Member Madsen, I see your hand raised. Sure, I, and and I'll just admit that I'm the one that kind of raised this whole point. <laughs> um, it, the reason being that um, you know I work full time. And if we're not gonna be in a room with everybody, I was just wondering if there was any way we might have some flexibility and timing, um, maybe be flexible for the candidates as well and maybe try a morning or an afternoon and not just eight hours straight during the day. Um, it makes my life a little easier. And so I'll, I'll admit I selflessly, selfishly asked for that. Um, so I'm, I'm just putting it out there just to give you a little bit more color as to why Dan is raising it. So are there any thoughts from any other, any other members? Oh, Dan, I don't have a raise your yep. hand button. I'm in my car. Bernardi. So this is Johnny Bernardi. Can I ask? Absolutely. You You've got the floor. Okay, thank you. I, I would like to support that. I think uh, we have a lot of people that volunteer their time and the commitment of taking vacation time to do that is a big ask as well as it will give flexibility to our candidates. I know personally, I am um, not able to come on Monday. So if we do, if we did that one in the evening, that would be helpful for me. I, if it is during the day, I um, would try to make part of it, but I don't know that I can. I would just like list, I would just, I would um, view the interviews after, but I think the flexibility, especially for all the people participating in this process would be helpful. Thank you. Um, additional comments, uh, Council Member Rogers. Uh, yes, I, I just comment that for those of you who may have done lengthy Zoom conferences, this should reduce some of the fatigue that comes with hours of uh, time on Zoom. That's a good point. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Jim Erickson. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know how to raise my hand. I don't have the little button there, so uh, I spoke up. Um, I think that makes sense. I want to embellish it with one more suggestion because in the past we had a 15-minute break with a 45-minute, you know, interview, 
And it took that much time to get people out of the room, back into the room, introduce them, walk them around. I think that I'd like to suggest that we shorten that time between because we're on Zoom. Otherwise, we're just sitting here kind of not doing anything that would, we could save maybe five or 10 minutes between meetings. And then secondly, I would, to Jerry's point, um, maybe have a break, a longer break sometime, you know, so that it's not, maybe we do two and then a, a longer break or maybe three or do the morning and then so people can go do other things. So uh, it's a little logistical nightmare for Sally to work out, but uh, I'm supportive of flexibility and I would like to shorten the time between breaks, which would shorten the time that we're on Zoom. Thank you. Any other thoughts or questions or comments there? Sally, does this make sense to you? Um, do you need guidance from us further? <laughs> well, it, it would be nice to have a little further guidance. Did you want me to try and schedule like from like three to seven or is it, are you looking at all afternoon, evening? Do, is there flex, do we want to look one day morning, one day late afternoon, evening? Yeah, I think it probably would be good to, I mean, we could actually set those when we, you know, I think it's good to, to alternate, but probably decide which, which ones we're going to do with, so people can block their schedules. So like council member Madsen. Is there any way we might be able to get a little bit of feedback from the interviewees, just kind of whether they have any preference for later in the day or morning, and then we can kind of set up some agenda. I mean, maybe some want daytime, maybe that's better for them. And, you know, we can kind of guide off of that a little bit, just throwing that out as a suggestion. Thank you. That sounds like that might add an, an additional 20 schedules <laughs> to manage. <Yeah. laughs> um, why don't I propose this? Why don't we, should we, should, and we can do this um, offline and send it out to folks. Let, let's just narrow down. Some, <laughs> bless you, Paul. Thank you. Excuse um, me. We, we can narrow it down to some some sections, some time blocks. Does that does that make sense to everybody we, going into the evening? I think you're probably right. I, I don't know. Do we do we want to go much later than seven? I, seven is a start time. I mean, so that that seems we don't got to go too late to the evening. But um, and so, so we'll do that after this. We will. Um, I, I think we can can narrow down some some time slots and then uh, send it out to the group. Does that make sense, Sally? Yes. Because I think, again, we're going to want a, a, a set number of blocks so that it's not um, totally um, totally random that week just for everybody else's schedule and planning purposes. So, okay. That sounds good. Um, and then do we need to talk about procedural details for the interviews? Um, I think Tim, Tim uh, Council Member Hipsch, I see your hand is up. Yeah. Uh, one additional piece, I think it would also be good to set the, the meeting time for us after all the interviews to do oh, to, to yeah. set that. Um, and I'm assuming that would be either Thursday or Friday during the day. Uh, but that, that would be one that we want to make sure we said that everyone has a chance to be able to, to attend. Correct. Good point. That's, yeah, that's definitely a day meeting, <laughs> daytime that we'll probably need to block, block two or three hours for, I would, I would guess. So, um, okay, so our, our, our um, we will get you more inter more information on the, uh, the, the timing and so forth. And then um, we also need, customarily we have assigned a RCAC member to each applicant to call them, after, you know, although I know some of them are probably watching today to call them or reach out to them and let them know that they've been selected for an interview and to expect a communication from, an email from Sally to set that up and then to kind of, you know, be the one notifying them for that. Um, we've traditionally gone, gone around and people have volunteered to, uh, to reach out to specific applicants. Is there any, um, Sally, how, do, how should, what's your recommendation on this? Do we just go through the list of applicants and have council members volunteer? I, yes, Chair, I think that would be the most efficient way to go through it. That sounds good. Let's, you wanna start by? Do you have the list open or Paul I, does? <laughs> Paul does. <laughs> Paul, do you want it? You're on mute. So the first is um, Val Arswald. I can call her. And Carl. then Eunice Beal. I can call Wendy. 
Dan Dorman. Jim Erickson, Jim Erickson, I'll do that unless somebody else wanted to step up. I haven't talked to Dan for a while. I'd like to talk to him, so I'll do Dan. Ruth Johnson. I can do that one. Karen Krause. I can call Karen. Randy Simonson. I'll call Randy. Daryl Elkire. I'll call Daryl. Devin Driscoll. I can call Devin. James Farnsworth. I'll do James too. Amy Coke. I can call Amy. Don Liftall. I'll call him. Uh, Karen Shanfeld. I'll call Karen. Rachel Westermeyer. I'll call her. Neil Franz. I'll I can call, call him. Dave Wong. Sally, who, who got um, Neil? Who did you have for Neil? I didn't, because I can't see you guys at the same time I'm looking at the sheet. <laughs> okay. So I'm, ho I'm hoping, who, who said for Neil? Well, there were two of us. That's why I'm, oh. I'm just wondering. I'm happy to, someone else, we kind of spoke over each other. So. I did as well. You can go ahead and call him. Okay, got it. Thanks. Uh, Dave Wang, I think. I can call him. Michael Shu. I'll call Michael. Cody Beerhollen, Beerhollen. I can call her. Doug Hitch. I can do that. Lucas Sh Shorstrom. Ostrom, I can call Shorstrom. him. Shorstrom, okay. Mike Yost. I'll call Mike. That's everybody, huh? Okay. So I would encourage you to do those do those right uh, as soon as possible, and then we issue a press release, correct, on this, Sally, with the uh, the people that will be um, with with the applicants that have been uh, chosen for an interview. So, are are there any other questions or items of? So, Mr. Chairman, uh, Council Member England, uh, just a process question. So we're just alerting them that they've been selected and to look for further communication about scheduling and additional logistics, right? Correct. Okay. And Mr. Chairman? Council Member Erickson. Oh, would you refresh our memory uh, about the confidentiality of the applications? I understand some points are, some parts are, and some parts are not. How do, how do we deal with any details in the applications? What, uh, Sally, what, uh, Good question. Tell, us, tell us what to do with that. Yeah, there's um, certainly some information on the applications that contain private data. So um, if someone request, makes a request of you to see an application, direct them to staff because we have redacted versions of applications. Um, some applicants checked that they are okay with releasing their essay questions or their phone number or email, but a lot did not. So still it's probably best to go through our office if someone's requesting um, an application and specifically the reference portions, those references that they provided, their names and contact information is confidential and should not be shared. So to, to summarize that, if someone asked for a copy, uh, let's make it yes or no. If they ask for a copy, they have to talk to you. And the rest of it, we just uh, deal with it ourselves and don't share. That's Correct. the safest way to do it, right? Correct. Thank you. Uh, uh, Representative Bernardi, I think I see your hands up. Your, your blue hand. And I think you're muted. <laughs> Okay, I got it. Thank you. I just, I just went on video. I just wanted to be clear. I am parked in a parking lot in my car. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Any uh, council member Farrell? I have a couple of questions. So Sally, were you keeping, uh, somebody was keeping a list of everyone who's contacting. Is that right? Sally said she didn't have it. So 
I didn't, but I can certainly go back and watch and get the oh, okay. List. So I just wanted to be sure that somebody yeah. didn't get. And um, when we contact them, we tell, should we send you a note that says, I've called this person, go ahead and you reach out to them or that we should tell them to reach out to you? I'll reach out to them once we determine um, some blocks of time of when we're going to schedule the interviews until I get to that point. And okay. I will reach out probably this week. But This really is kind of a congratulations. You've been selected for an interview and we want them not to be surprised if, when the press release comes out because sure. they shouldn't be finding it out in a press release. <laughs> so, Got it. And then I have another about yep. the interview. In the past, candidates have created their own sort of maroon and gold one pager resume that's similar information to what's in their application, but it's more of a, they pass it around to all of us sitting there. And they, if anybody who's familiar enough with the process and knows that that's been done before, do we want to tell them not to do it? Tell them to do it. If our emails are all, I think, out on the RCAC um, website, they could go ahead and send that to us in advance of the interview electronically. Do we have any advice for them about that? Do they, I, if, if somebody realized that, oh gosh, these people know more than I do about the process and is there an advantage to that? And I wish I'd known I would have sent one or I just, I just was, I don't know what to tell them. That is a good point. Cause I think, uh, and uh, Jim, this was kind of at your suggestion. I know we, we, we did, I think last time encouraged folks to do kind of a public facing document outline. Right. Their qualifications and so forth, and um, it, it seems to me that we could encourage that again or, or suggest that to, to folks. But Sally, my guess is they probably need to submit that beforehand, and it would need to be posted online. Correct? Is that? Or, or... I don't want to create another <laughs> degree of. <laughs> yeah, I... they email it to us. Yeah, they, they could. Want it to? Applicants are welcome to email me a one page document if they choose to, and I can certainly post it. Oh, okay. And it would be a public document though. Uh, Sally, uh, on that point, let's try and reduce the burden on you. I, I, th I strongly support because those one pagers that they do are very helpful. You know, it's they, they show more and, and say more than the application. So I think we should encourage that. I think in your uh, email or message to them about the blocking everything, you should say that. You are encouraged to, you're welcome to, I guess you'd say, uh, to do it. But then the question is, should they send to you and you pass them on or should we tell them to take that burden off of you and send them directly to the whole committee if they want to? Which would you prefer? Either. It's, it's not too difficult for me to post something for you guys to access it or email it to you to a page, to a web page. Let, let's, Sally, why don't we, we'll, we'll, let's have it sent to you because I, I'm just concerned too that we're, you know, we've got 25 email addresses then that we're having everybody have to manage their, you know, for each individual thing. So we'll, we'll route it and um, I'm happy to help there too if I, if I can too in terms of distributing it to council members and- Post and something for you guys to access it or email it to you, to a page, to a web page. I, I'm speaking. <laughs> Let's, that, was, that was some weird feedback of. Yeah, you were <laughs> you talking and your face was still. Um, Council Member Rogers, see your hands up. Uh, a, a related question I, I just thought of when you talk about sending a one page affair. Uh, what if someone asks if they can uh, screen share one of those pieces of information during their interview? Why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sally, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you again for, for the <laughs> in terms of how I, that. If it, if an applicant wants to share their screen and their one pager, that's fine. I'm not. I don't think staff will be um, doing that. But if the candidate would like to, that's okay. I would think. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Real quick, Dan, Sally, you and I should try that out because I think you might have to share your host screen part. So let's yes. let's do some practice runs of that before we offer that as a suggestion. Sure. We've had PowerPoint presentations and other hearings where folks have shared. So 
think we could figure it out, but that sounds good. Mr. Chairman, I have a, another question. Uh, Council Member Englund. Thank you. Uh, so when, when we reconvene in January and uh, candidates uh, make their presentations, can you kind of maybe spend a second here talking about how that process will work? So, you know, are we gonna go around the horn for questions, how that's gonna work and how we vote? Sure, no, that, that, that's a good question. That's a good question. So in the past, we've traditionally offered them, uh, you know, and encouraged a, you know, five minute opening statement of some kind, and then um, have opened it to the RCAC for questions. Um, I was envisioning kind of doing it that, that same way. I guess the, the question is how we do the questions. If if it's just, if it's fine through this type of format, um, it, 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 frankly, just managing the meeting here, it does seem like that could be workable, or you just simply be recognized, um, and then uh, you know, like it, as we've done in the rooms in the past, it's typically I'm tracking who's got their hand up or something too. So it could be simply a matter of raising your hand on here, and we'll put you in on the list in the order. Uh, in which it was received. Does that make sense to everyone? Or Sally, again, do you have any alternative? No, I think that's probably the best way. Because I do I do think this isn't the type of thing that you can submit questions for in advance necessarily, just because everybody's got different experience and some of them will, uh, in their opening comments, make some of our questions moot too. So I think it's, um, th that's the best, th that's the, and, and obviously if we have trouble with that in the first couple interviews, we will, we will refine that process, but I think that that works. Um, uh, uh, Senator Clausen. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just had a comment about that screen share. I, I'd be more inclined to be able to focus on the candidate and uh, have reviewed that one pager prior to rather than when we're having the one-to-one the -one interaction, I'd prefer to be focusing on the candidate rather than having uh, something up there that uh, is distracting perhaps from me focusing on the responses of the candidate. If that's how I understood the question earlier that putting up uh, their one pager while uh, we're interviewing them, that's how I interpreted that. If I'm wrong, please uh, correct me. No, I think you interpreted that correctly, and I think as you phrase that, I guess that 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 does um, raise a concern for me now too. Just kind of thinking, e extrapolating that to the next step as as we're kind of opening the door for a vast array of multimedia presentations and other other things. So I do think we should we should probably require that they be that they be provided in advance and distributed to the whole to the whole membership too. Just just be, the other. Um, the other reason I think we need to distribute it too is to make sure that it's not just some members being picked off and getting the documents and others not necessarily. I think we, we need to have the responsibility for that distribution to ensure that all members are getting the same material. So um, does, does that make sense? Jerry, I think you were the one that raised the, the screen sharing option. Uh, I, exactly, I, I, I hoped this is the conclusion we would come to when I brought up the issue. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. So, so, so Mr. Chairman or Sally, it'll be, I, we will get the, to recap it, any, any one pager that gets sent in to Sally from a candidate that, and they're in, uh, welcome to do so and told that's true. She will send it then to us and it should be incumbent on us to print it out because I think I'd want to have it in my hard copy in my, in front of me while they're being interviewed. I think that's the best way. So is that, that the way you, anybody envisioned it? Cause I don't want to put it up on my screen or anything. I want to just uh, hard copy it. That's what I would do. That's correct. And then you can, man, you know, if you, if you want to print it, if you want to view it on the screen, if you want to look at it beforehand and not deal with it during the interview, that's, that's fine. So uh, 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 representative Bernardi. I thought I, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I thought I heard um, Ms. Ms. Olson say that the candidates could send those out directly to us. Did I misunderstand that? No, I think that was one of the options given earlier. And I, I think we've, we've come back to the uh, idea that it needs to go, uh, we need to have it go through Sally so that we're, we're ensuring consistency of delivery. Does that make sense? Well, may I ask that question? I think that's right so that that's their main, but if any candidate wanted to send it directly to any member, or all members, we don't want to prohibit that, do we? Correct. I don't. I don't know that we can. 
Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? And then Sally, one one other question. So all, all of the materials that we normally get in a binder, they will be online, correct? And so it will be every, every council member's responsibility to either print or find a, a electronic method to review that as they need during the, the Zoom or what, what, what guidance can you give us there? Um, yeah, Chair Walter, that is correct. I In previous years, this is how we have done it as well. And I've also printed, but um, everything gets posted to that password protected page because it, there is private data that only council members can review. And so that will all be posted prior to the interviews. I think in Tim's document, there's a deadline of when those reference responses will be posted. And then you'll have the opportunity to print or review those electronically. And Tim also had his hand up, Dan. Oh, Council Member Hipsch. Sorry, I didn't see you. Yeah. <laughs> sure, Walter. Just from a uh, from a efficiency standpoint, I would recommend that when when we have those one pagers, that it gets posted to the portal as opposed to being sent out with email, because otherwise we'll get multiple emails and they'll just be hard to find them in the in the process. So having all of those documents in one spot, I think, will make it much easier. I also support not sharing screens, just because it's one less technical hurdle that we have to go through uh, as as we switch over different uh, participants coming. Good point. Okay, that sounds good. So I, I think that's a that's a wise idea, the portal um, concept for that. So okay, I think we've got any other questions on interview process, and we, we will be following up with you with the blocks of time uh, that first week in Jan or the week of the fourth to hold for for interviews, and then uh, we will. Be back, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Council Member England. So then, just one last question. Sorry, how uh, how how will we vote on? Uh, oh, I'm glad you asked that. Um, so uh, Sally and the LCC team have uh, developed uh, the an, an online voting system through the polling function here within uh, within Zoom. So you will be voting online on on your screens. Um, it, it's 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 a pretty simple. Uh, it, it's not, uh, it's the type of, I mean, and, and then we'll, we'll obviously re report, it, it's basically a tool for us to use in managing the meeting. So the number, you know, the, the vote totals will then be reported out. It's not the type of thing where there's a tabulation um, on the side of the, the screen or anything like that. It's, it's it, for, for, your, for, for our intents and purposes, it will be the same way. It'll be, you'll, you'll just be voting online rather than by the paper ballot. So it will be a, actually a quicker voting process, I think. Than, uh, than we've had in the past, just from the need to, uh, you know, count a uh, hand, um, uh, count by hand paper ballots. So Sally, anything more you'd add there on that process? Did I explain that appropriately or? <laughs> I think you covered it. Okay. So that's a new innovation that we'll have from years past. Hopefully that would speed up that, that process as well. So, all right. Any, anything else for the good of the order? If not, we will, uh, Wow, this is less than an hour. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty good for us in, in any meeting. So, uh, particularly online. Again, thank you everybody for being online for this. I know it's it's, it's an interesting, interesting time. So, um, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. It's been moved by Councilmember Madsen. Is there a second? Second. It's been seconded. I, I don't know exactly by who, but we've got some. We've got several seconds. So, um, all those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Any opposition? Seeing none, we stand adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>